Libya, 1963, March 6, uh, a car was shot into. And what was one of our cars, a sneak car, we got one of our first uh, new cars. That was a 1963 Valiant. We had been at uh, the church in Greenwood, at Wesley Chapel, uh, getting clothes and food ready that had been sent down from the north to, dis to distribute uh, the next day. And uh, it was about 11 o'clock at night. We left the church and we were on our way back. And Sam Block, he decided, you know, he had asthma and he, he decided he wanted to go uh, by the office stop and get his uh, breathalyzer. I had this real, real feeling, you know, which I would get from time to time that was always accurate, that, that we didn't need to do that. We, I, and I said, no, don't go back, don't go by the office. Do not go by the office. The office located on, on uh, McLaren. In Greenwood, that was our second office. Uh, but Sam insisted on going by, and his his girlfriend, who later became his wife, said, "said No, Sam, you don't need to go by there because you have a, a breathalyzer with the with medication at my house." Sam was driving, so he insisted he went on by there. And as soon as we stopped, we were on the other side of the street from the office. As soon as he stopped, a big thundering boom went off. Boom! Blew out both windows on in the in the front. On the passenger side, there was a house, and people still had the tin of them, you know, the cold air from coming under. That's where they had pellets made holes, the shotgun, about, about like that size, and it was about 27 of them. And they, what happened, they, they weren't concerned about it getting a spread, they were interested to just take Sam Block's head off, you know. What, what happened is his fiancee said, I said, I, I hollered from the back seat. I said, I said, don't let him get out of the car, Peggy. And and she said, Sam. And he leaned toward her and she leaned toward him. That simultaneously, whoom, and it missed both of them. It missed both of them. You know, it missed him. And Sam hollered, I'm hit. I said, I think I'm hit too. And I jumped out of the car and there was some bricks laying outside. Because they drove off very slowly because they thought they had done their job. And I picked up some bricks and started running behind the car, throwing bricks, uh, hitting the car, boom, boom. And then they took off. They had been following us because later on, one of the local people who was a taxi cab driver, he said, he said we saw them, he said, we saw them following, following y'all. He said, but when you all stopped, he said, that's when they moved up fast beside the car. So it was no way to, it was, you know, it was happening just like that. It was no way they could warn us, you know. And it looked like God, the Spirit, is already warning us. I was telling Sam, do not go by the office. Uh, I was in the car, in the back seat, and and Sam's fiance's sister, Essie, was in the, was in the back seat with me. And so it was four of us in the, in the car. Four of us had been over there distributing, you know, uh, packaging the, uh, the the food by mm -hmm. by name that we were going to where we were going to distribute, you know, for, for the next day. And as soon as that happened, see, that was a down the right down the street was a taxi cab stand, black taxi cab again. And so I can't think of her real name. It was Teeny Weenie. We call her. She called her. She was a dispatcher. She called the the the, the, uh, the police, FBI, all the came, just like that. So they went far away. I don't know why they were so quick in getting there, and because I do know that the FBI collaborated with the local police. I knew that. I knew. I knew that. Mm -hmm. And I learned later. It was uh, not then, but later years, much later years, uh, around either '98 or 2000. Essie, who was in the back seat with me, she she worked for the the policeman who did the shooting, but we we didn't know that at the time. I didn't, and so uh, I know when the, the police came back with him, this particular police said to her, uh, "Essie, you'd be riding around with these niggas. You're gonna get you're gonna get killed." You know that's what he told her. You know, the thing was, he's he was the guy. It was later years that she that she, that she told she saw him. You know, she she's when when he. When she pulled up, she glimpsed and she saw him. And she kept quiet all these years. And it was good that she did because we were young at the time and we would have, uh, and he still would have been patrolling the black community and we would have, we would have set up something for him, most likely.